Hello, everybody. My name is David Swartney. I'm a professor at the University of Iowa and the director uh, for the University of Iowa Center for Health Effects of Environmental Contamination. At Cheek, we've long been interested in the safety of drinking water in schools. And about a year ago, we launched our Grants to Schools program, which provides funding for testing and repairs of any lead contamination found in drinking water. If you're interested in this program, please check out the link below and we'd be happy to work with you going forward. And it's led that leads me here to this video today reaching out to you that the EPA has recently mandated new testing in schools as part of the revisions to the lead and copper rule. So in the not too distant future, community water systems that supply water to schools that are not their own public water system will have to start testing 20% of all the schools in their service area. And these tests will be conducted for lead. And there's five specific locations in schools that will be required to be tested. Two drinking water faucets, uh, fountains, one kitchen faucet, one classroom faucet, and then one nurse's office faucet. One of the problems with this program is that if there are issues found with lead present in drinking water at unsafe levels, schools will be responsible for the repairs. And there, there's not any additional funding that's coming to schools to assist with this, these remedial efforts. And so this is a little bit of an unfunded mandate that's coming down the road to our schools. And we wanna make sure you all are prepared to take advantages of resources that might be available today to better prepare you to, you to make sure you can deliver safe drinking water to children in your school. The other issue I have with these revisions is that it, this is not at all comprehensive for what schools need in terms of all the potential locations where children can drink. Even EPA acknowledges that this new law is not meant to, to replace more comprehensive testing. And it's this idea of comprehensive testing that's absolutely critical because there's a large number of locations in most schools that, where children might be able to get access to drinking water. These are pictures we've taken from the schools we've worked with. Most classrooms for, for pre-K and kindergarten have these bubblers that are built into the sinks in the classroom. And so if you had to only test in five locations, would it be comprehensive? Would it be enough to make sure that we're delivering safe water to our students? And so of all things, it's actually COVID that provides a bit of an opportunity for us today. That state uh, uh, school districts across the country have been using uh, funds, uh, relief funds from COVID to purchase bottle fillers to increase access to safe drinking water in schools. And so maybe you're like the schools here in Iowa City where some of the traditional uh, bubblers or drinking water fountains have been bagged off because schools don't want children congregating there or putting their mouths close to the, to the bubbler and potentially transmitting disease to students that use it after. And so there's a lot of, uh, of evidence that these touchless access to drinking water by allowing a student to use a bottle to not have to push any buttons and come into contact with, with what it takes to get access might be a safer, more uh, uh, hygienic way to make sure we're not transmitting disease when students go to get drinking water. And so bottle fillers prevent, prevent, uh, present a pretty unique opportunity to kill two birds with one stone here, that they can give us a chance to get touchless access to drinking water that reduces transmission of disease that can be transmitted through contact. And it's not just COVID, thinking long-term, it's the seasonal flu, it's colds, it's gastrointestinal illnesses that we know can be touched, uh, spread through touching. And we know that children like to touch and then uh, touch others and, and transmit disease that way. But it also gives us a chance to deliver water that we can be confident is lead-free. That these bottle fillers come with carbon filters that are certified to deliver clean water with lifetimes of about a year so that you're only needing to do maintenance once a year to deliver water that's as safe as the pediatricians would recommend in schools at one part per billion. And so we can use COVID funds today to buy bottle fillers to take advantage of the benefits they bring with respect to disease transmission while also ensuring that we're getting cleaner, safer drinking water that's free of lead. Experts uh, will say that you need or should shoot for at least one bottle filler for every 100 students in your school. And then estimates for, that have been done for cost benefit analysis related to these bottle fillers, that based on estimates of what it would take to acquire one and install one bottle filler, as well as replacement carbon filters, we estimate that we could get bottle fillers and replacement carbon filters for four years using this idea of one bottle filler for every 100 students for about $10,000 for a school with 300 students or $83,000 for a larger school with about 2,500 students. And while that might sound like a lot of money, an investment you not, may not make in other times, the availability of, of funds uh, through COVID from the federal government, these would be approved uses for schools to take advantage of getting those benefits for hygiene 
and now down the road being also able to take advantage of the cleaner, safer water they can deliver in schools with, with confidence that you're free from mud. So thanks so much for your interest today in listening to this video and hearing this idea. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at the contact information provided. And again, if you're interested in taking advantage of Cheek's testing program, um, my contact information is there and we'd love to work with you in the future. Thank you.